So in this video, I'm going to finish up talking about Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium and deviations from Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium and how that can occur due to non-random mating. Now, deviations from Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium can be used to understand what kind of evolution is happening. It could be natural selection, it could be genetic drift, it could be some form of non-random mating that is causing allele frequencies to change over time. In a previous example, we talked about sickle cell anemia. We used a theoretical sample of 200 individuals that showed these genotype frequencies. We calculated the allele frequencies, and we used those allele frequencies plugged into the Hardy-Weinberg equation to come up with uh, predicted frequencies of each genotype under uh, equilibrium. That allowed us to calculate the expected number the expected number of each genotype in equilibrium and we compared the expected number versus the observed number and we saw that we had a deficit of homozygotes there were more expected or predicted homozygous dominants and homozygous recessives than observed and there was an excess of heterozygotes so this lines up with the idea that there's an advantage to be in heterozygous when uh, you are uh, in a malarial area if you are uh, heterozygous for the sickle cell trait makes you resistant to malaria, you're more likely to pass your genes on into the future, results in a uh, excess of heterozygotes. In this example, we're going to look at flowers and how non-random mating can result in deviations from Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. You may want to pause the video and read through this example. Uh, I'll just briefly explain it here. So, Flowers often rely on pollinators to move their pollen around, and the preference of the pollinators, the, the types of flowers or the types of colors the pollinators like most, can actually impact the genetic structure and the evolution of flowers. So we're using a hypothetical example using the flower morning glory to see how this could happen. And in this flower, there's three color morphs. There's going to be flowers that are entirely white, entirely purple, or those that are white with just have purple in the center. And these patterns are going to be determined by a single gene in this example, M, where big M is dominant to uh, little m. Uh, big M, big N individuals will be uh, one solid color, little m, little m, uh, individuals will be another the other solid color and big m little m heterozygotes will be the intermediate that are both white and purple now when pollinators have a preference they can um, make the population dynamics the population genetics behave as if there is non-random mating even though the it's not literally the flowers going out and picking who they're going to mate with the preferences of the bees if can result in patterns of non-random mating. So bees often are biased towards colors, uh, and individual bees, let's say, have biases towards individual colors. So some bees prefer purple, so that means they always visit purple plants and only move pollen between purple plants. Others, perhaps, are biased towards white, and they only move pollen between white flowers and so forth. This is going to result in non-random mating and it's going to throw the population out of Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. So here is our data. This is similar to the data used in a, an assignment, slightly rounded off to make the calculations a little more clearer. 750 individuals, most of them are big M, big M. Um, uh, a little less than half are little M, um, to a little less than a quarter or little m, little m, and then 150 are big M, uh, little m. We can calculate the uh, frequencies. This should be little s here, not big S. This should actually be big M and little m. I've got it right here. We can um, have it correct here. The uh, This gives us the allele frequencies here. I would recommend that you pause the video and make sure you can work through these calculations yourself. So if we take these frequencies of our alleles, we plug them into the Hardy-Weinberg equation, make sure you know how to do that, uh, we get our frequency, our predicted frequencies of big M, big M, big M, little m, and little m, little m. Then we can take these predicted frequencies and multiply them against 750, and we can get expected numbers of each genotype. 
So with these observed allele frequencies and a population of 750 plants, we would expect there to be about 300 big M, big M homozygous, about 100 little m, little m homozygous, and 348, 350 homo, uh, heterozygous. We compare this uh, against the observed number, and we can see there are a lot more observed heterozygous dominance. There are about twice as many heterozygous recessives, and there are fewer heterozygous. I'm not sure if I said that right. Um, there are more homozygous dominants. There are more homozygous recessives than uh, predicted or expected, and there are fewer heterozygous. So we predicted using the Hardy-Weinberg equations about 350 heterozygous, and in the observed sample there were only 150 for a difference of about 200. So here we have a heterozygous heterozygous deficit. So why could this uh, potentially happen? Why could we have this heterozygous uh, deficiency? Well, when we have non-random mating, we're having like mating with like. So our uh, our little m little m are um, the bees are just moving pollen between little m little m flowers. So these are always little m little m individuals are always going to produce little m little m offspring. So that is going to uh, be non-random mating. That's going to favor the production and an excess observed number of little m little m big m big m individuals are going pollen is primarily going to be moved between big m big m individuals because they're all a single color so big m big m individuals are going to produce big m big m offspring that's non-random mating so we're going to see an excess here now our heterozygous these are the mixed colors they are white with a purple center now their offspring uh if if big m big m always mate with big m big m excuse me if Big M, little m heterozygotes always mate with big M, little m heterozygotes because the bees are only moving flowers, moving pollen between the uh, same colored flowers. What we're going to see is a, a mix of offspring when heterozygotes mate. So big M, big little m cross with big M, little m is going to produce some homozygous dominants, some homozygous recessives, and some heterozygotes. So um, there will still be heterozygous uh, heterozygotes produced in the population, but this uh, non-random mating pa pattern will result in both big M, big M, and little m, little m. Overall, that's going to result in a deficit of heterozygotes, and a um, uh, pattern of uh, being out of equilibrium with uh, Hardy-Weinberg um, predictions. Now, in this case, uh, there's not selection. There is behavioral selection going on by the by the bees there isn't uh, natural selection going on we'd only be able to really interpret um, this pattern using our ecological knowledge there really isn't selection against the reason why there are so few or there are relatively few little m excuse me there are so relatively few big m little m's isn't because they're being selected against or because they have lower fitness it has to do with the genetics of when you cross big m little m with a big m little m that you uh, produce homozygous of either class. Um, you can write out the Punnett square for this and you can see how that would work out.